So, in order to try to put in the right tracks uh, this debate uh, for encouraging uh, young surgeon dedicated to cancer treatment to identify their role as a special role, I would try to uh, answer to this difficult question that Aisha posed to me when she called me. Try to tell people what define surgical oncology from a, from a normal surgeon. So, uh, uh, as uh, my friend uh, told us before, we, 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 we have to start by definitions. What is a general surgeon and what is the difference? And if you look uh, uh, at the website of different surgical societies, uh, a good definition of a general surgeon is given by the American Board of Surgery, and uh, it's, uh, it's, um, it's a broad spectrum of, uh, of activities that are included in what we call general surgery, and of course, they include surgical oncology. But uh, when it comes to additional knowledges, you see a lot of different disciplines there, but oncology is not Cited. You, should, you don't see any word related to, related to oncology here, and additional skills are so many, but uh, knowing cancer physiology and pathology is not included. If you look at the uh, uh, European point of view of what is a general surgeon, because this, this is the organism of the European commu community that gives uh, you the certificate of being a good surgeon, a good general surgeon, uh, they for sure define surgery as a large specialty. A large specialty means that we need knowledges in different fields and additional skills in many fields, but again, no oncology. So, it is extremely strange that in a world where cancer is a big burden, there is no uh, subspecialty identified for sure since years regarding our idea of curing cancer by surgery, but uh, who does it as founded societies? These societies are not lasting from very long. The, the, the most ancient is the American Society of Surgical Oncology, SSO, that is the new name of an old society that was born from surgeons that were operating on the East Coast in big cancer centers that were in the United States active since many decades. And then SSO in Europe, as, uh, as born, and then we have uh, now surgical societies for surgical oncology in most countries. Some of them are very active, like, uh, like Basel in Britain, the KSSO in, in Korea. And they have their own paper and journals that are highly ranked and publish just uh, matters on surgical oncology. So what defines a surgical oncology? I think that uh, to be called a surgical oncology, you must wear these three medals. Uh, knowledge, a special knowledge, skills, special skills for treating cancer, and setting. Where do you work is important. It's very important. I will tell you why. The, for the first medal of knowledge, this is a clear relation. So again, these are data that identify that in countries or in places where there is a high rate of publication on cancer written by surgeons, there is a better outcome. Uh, you see two different uh, tables here, because in USA they have so many publications that they confound the data here. So if you cut USA out, you see that there is a clear relationship uh, between quality and number of uh, cancer publication made by surgery, by surgeons, and surgical outcome of cancer treatment. And uh, so this has been established and, and observed so that this kind of people has uh, started some common activities throughout the entire world in order to identify a so-called possible global curriculum for a cancer surgeon. A cancer surgeon should not have knowledge and skills. An example of special skills is that me or our friend as uh, uh, an expert in surgery are able to identify subspecial uh, 
super subject specific, specific for cancer surgery and who doesn't know and who is not aware to this is not, uh, is not uh, reaching the best uh, results in any case. It's not just removing organ and nodes, but removing them following a special principle. Of course, this principle should not uh, be just hypothesis. Every high, good hypothesis has to be demonstrated, demonstrated. And as we've been discussing before, there are trials that have been registered trying to demonstrate this principle. Of course, if you look at the trials that are registered for cancer treatment, 95% of these trials do not include surgeons. Three of these 5% include surgery in multidisciplinary treatments comparing the results. But only 1% of registered trials are surgery-only trials. So this demonstrates the lack of culture of surgical oncology. We need, as we said before, general surgeons dedicated to cancer that are eager to demonstrate their results by trials, identify the best way, surgery versus surgery. And, and what I am talking about here is identifying special membranes, identifying the planes with a different idea of not just removing nodes through the fats, but removing, you know, the sac, including the nodes uh, in, a, in, a, in, a very, in a very delicate way, but uh, not only for the sake of being atraumatic, but for the sake of being curative, eradicating and radical. Let me go over with this. We have been discussing this issue before. And uh, the setting, so knowledge, skills, setting. It's very important where you work. Uh, this is for, uh, just uh, an example of what is going on for treating colon cancer. And this is the region of Rome, and uh, this one, fortunately, is my hospital. So if you look at the number of cases, of the, of the caseload that is treated in different hospitals for colorectal cancer, there are huge differences. But these huge differences have an evident uh, uh, you know, counterpart in the fact that the better technology is most used where the volume is high. So the highest rate of laparoscopy is concentrated in high volume center. And this works also for results. And better results are concentrated in hospitals where these high numbers are left to specialized teams. So, Concentration and specialization creates better knowledge, and better knowledge creates eager for demonstrating your hypothesis with data. So there is a very clear correlation between uh, centralization and results. And who has demonstrated this before are our friends from uh, Scandinavia, Holland, and uh, this part of Europe where registries are a reality since uh, many, many years. So everything is... Uh, counted, everything is recorded, and recording uh, the, the outcome of the, the same cases that are treated in low volume versus non-low volume center, the results are very striking. And, uh, and this is clear and published. So we need centralization in order to add knowledge and skill to uh, a sort of a multidisciplinary uh, way of treating patients in the best way, not only because we know what to do, but, but because we are trained to do the same thing differently for every single patient. Where you have uh, centralization and concentration of high volume caseloads, you have uh, structured multidisciplinary team. And a multidisciplinary team adds, uh, adds uh, quality to the clinical pathway. Uh, every single step, diagnosis to intervention to postoperative course is discussed, and every discussion is uh, counterweighted so uh, this is the key for reaching the best results. And uh, what we would like to stress is that the surgeon should be leader in these multidisciplinary teams. So until we do not understand that we should constitute a group of people that define their sem themselves as surgical oncologists, it's, it's going to be very difficult to be leaders in these multidisciplinary teams. I don't want to see a future where other specialists discuss the cases, decide what to do, and then give the surgeon as a technician the task of removing some disease. 
So uh, I, I think we have a role in this. And, uh, and, and the first role is uh, learning how to evaluate our results. It is very difficult, it's not very common, but we have to learn that we have to measure our results. So that we have, we have to become, as a surgical oncologist, the first critics for ourselves. We have to go back to our data, we have to look at what we have done, and we have to critically re-examine auditing our data. Where auditing culture is an established uh, activity, uh, the, uh, the, the survivals get better and the quality of surgery uh, is increasing. And these are not phrases or ideas. This is our data. Where auditing culture is a standard thing, patients have better results. Why? Because, uh, because auditing creates a benchmark. If you look at your leak rate for rectal anastomosis and you see that you have 7.5%, you, you are normally asking yourself why my friends in another hospital is 5%. So you are forced to re-examine your movements, your skill, your uh, environment and your knowledge. And by doing that, you little by little move your results in order to equalize the 5% that you want to reach. This is the benchmarking effect. And again, this is not an idea. This has been well demonstrated in Holland. You know, this is before and after they decided to measure the result by a trial of chemo radiation before doing retal cancer surgery. And the results were perfect, but what happened after the publication of the results, that these results were not only good in the centers where the trial was done, but step by step, all the other centers applied the same procedure because they were benchmarking and observing them. So there is a, a, a so-called wave of knowledge that is uh, diffused by surgical oncologists when they appreciate their nature. And, uh, and, and the environment is important not only because the knowledge is shared, but because there are so many essential requirements that have to be respected in order to reach best results that we have to identify them, describe them, and to clarify in our hospital, in our cancer center in our low volume or high volume center that requirements for treating cancer are not only our hands. And when you, when you are well aware that you need a multidisciplinary team discussion and a lot of different specialists surrounding uh, the treatment of a single cancer with personalization and high quality, of course you are going to reach the better results. So you have, all, you have already seen this slide, the core value of a surgical oncologist should be putting the interest of the patient in the center, but at the same time uh, reminding that we are not going, we are not wanting to be technicians in the head of the brain of other specialists. I don't know if it works, but it is uh, very clear how many societies around the world now are in 2015, 15.2 yes. million people around the world were yeah, yeah, You can go on with the, with the sound, but yeah, this, is, well, this was an excellent movie made by the Brazilian Society of Surgical Oncology that now is a partner of the European Society and the Society of Surgical Oncology in America. The idea is that we have to raise awareness in the general public and in the politicians that surgical oncology should not remain a sort of a ghost uh, a sort of a uh, uh, less resort in the hands of some uh, of some surgeons removing an organ, but there must be a diffuse culture, and the best way of obtaining this idea is getting the patient to know that cancer surgery is something special. So this is one way of doing it: uh, short movies and activities, and uh, you know, meetings with people in order to expand the idea not only among surgeons but in the general public. And and, and, and the, in the in the in the in the policymakers, uh, we did a survey some time ago, uh, as this, in order to identify if this was perceived as a, a, a real specialty. But uh, we surveyed 24 countries, and uh, we uh, we saw that uh, half of those have an existing society of surgical oncology, half of those do not, and uh, the accreditation system are extremely different. In some countries, they have cancer centers; some countries have just units. 
Uh, in some countries, it is just a territorial network, but who performs the accreditation is not always the same, uh, the same authority. Sometimes it's the Ministry of Health, sometimes the Medical Council, or we have uh, regional rulers. So th there is a totally lack of homogeneity, and uh, the, the recognition of the surgical oncology professional profile through our Europe is very, very low. It's extremely low. And, um, and, and, uh, and uh, require curriculum in different countries in order to be credited like a, a surgical oncologist is totally different. And we are speaking about the European uh, Union. So you see here that the variance in training is not only Europe, it's globally extremely different, extremely different in length, extremely different in specialties. And, uh, and when we uh, uh, are looking around this, in this uh, uh, enormous variation around this world, uh, we see that there is extreme heterogeneity of the professional profile recognition throughout any single country. It's not considered as such in 60% of surveyed countries. As a surgical, the surgical oncology is nothing in 40% of the rest of the world. And there is extreme heterogeneity of the academic entitlement. And, uh, and this is very different in, uh, in comparison to medical oncology or radiation oncology. I know that there are some exceptions. I know that radiation oncology in Russia is, uh, is uh, it's not recognized as a special especially by all the rest of the world. Radiation oncologists are very well recognized, medical oncology are very well recognized, surgical oncologists not. So we are trying to work towards creating the perception and the culture of a global curriculum surgical oncology. So uh, we have uh, a European Board of Surgical Qualification as ESSO. Um, but uh, of course we cannot give this accreditation for every single kind of surgery. Breast surgery is totally different for colorectal. HBB is very different for esophageal. So we are trying to understand what we need in order to train people. And we are working together with the SSO, the American Society, that has established since a couple of, uh, maybe three years, the, this Global Forum of Cancer Surgeon. This is my friend Chandra Khan, who is in lead of this project. And we are trying to reunite together since 2017 once in a while in order to do something at a global level in order to, to grow. We are meeting regularly. What is uh, fun here that after we have published on Twitter this picture, there, there was a, a revolution of women. They say, where are the women? These are all men. We don't want to be in a society, in a global idea of surgical oncology with no women. They are right. There was a gender problem. So we are, we are trying to insert people with different genders, any race, and, and the group is growing. And uh, we are promoting diversity also as ESO, uh, because we have uh, not only, of course, uh, very wonderful women with us, but a lot of young people. I believe that Isaac, somebody will talk about it uh, uh, after me, it's an excellent way of networking. The powerful of the young people to network is incredible, and these ideas are spreading on their legs, not only um, sorry, I want, I want to show this picture because, oh, because Aisha is here, Andreas is here, Laura Lorenzoni is here, but, um, but uh, they are also extremely good in achieving incredible results just by networking because they don't feel the need of a leadership role when performing research. Networking among juniors usually is at a peer degree level. And uh, this is an example of an incredible work that they have done, just uh, 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 recruiting data and working on different national bases from Portugal, Russia, Italy, Britain. And uh, if you have time, please take a look at this study to understand how right I am when I say that the, the, they have a norm, that young people in this kind of young societies have an enormous role. We have courses, as is so, everybody is, is invited, the courses that are dedicated to subspecialties, and we are trying through uh, our education and training committee to expand the idea of, uh, of, uh, of surgical oncology. It's, uh, it's fun to be part of those courses. You see here, a lot, of a lot of young people is coming, they exchange ideas, they participate in hands-on cadre labs. So um, I, I think this is the best way to promote our activities. Uh, again, sorry. 
again, I will, I will, I will end my talk with uh, Umberto Veni from an Italian surgical oncology, maybe one of the fathers of the culture of surgical oncology. The lessons that I want to expand and preserve it in order to be not only general surgeon, but surgeon dedicated to cancer care, is that we have uh, the ones that feel the burden on their shoulder to expand the idea that we have to go from maximum from maximal tolerable surgery to a minimal effective treatment in surgery, preserving the anatomy and possibly improving, improving the quality of life of the people that we operate in order to cure them. Not only removing organs, leaving a diseased patient, but improving the quality of their life. So surgeons should not only act as a technician, as I told you before, but as a real scientist, an interventional biologist. This is what I used to say. So thank you so much for listening. I hope I was not boring with this theoretical uh, talk and uh, I am uh, really anxious to listen to the young people that invited me today and I, again, thankful to you for this presentation.